Jennifer Sheehan Show. I'm Jennifer. We'd love to give you our magazine full of inspirational stories. Go to the JenniferSheehanShow.com to subscribe. I would love to introduce you to my husband, Chris. Hi, baby. Hi, hi. It's so good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. This is my debut. <sighs> this is our love story. Oh, okay. I'm so excited to share it. I think uh, people will be very interested to know that together we believe in God's word. We believe that the Bible, in the Bible, God says that he hates divorce. Indeed he does. And the only outs that God gives us for marriage to get out of that marriage is uh, if they cheat, infidelity, and then if they're a non-believer and they leave, which means they abandon us. So they're the two ways out. But regardless, God still hates divorce, as we both know. And my gosh, before we met, we went through so much with our ex-spouses. And uh, very hard with my ex-husband being a non-believer. And after 23 years of marriage, leaving me and abandoning me. And your story. Well. It's a good thing he did because I was right there to come get you and pick you up. So um, good thing for me anyway. Uh, yes, my story. So I was married for 18 years as well. And uh, well, long, t- long time. Uh, two children, two young boys in, in the marriage. And uh, it was my primary motivation to stay married uh, for the kids so they could have a father to grow up with and... Um, to learn from and to, uh, you know, just get them ready to become someone's father or husband uh, to somebody else. And, and that was my, that was my major MO, I should say. Right. And what was being married to your ex like? So, you know, I think that my walk with God was not as strong as I probably thought it was when we, when we first got married um, in 2000. Uh, we, were two young kids and I think we were um, just kind of not putting our priorities in the right spot and not of course giving God control of our relationship um, which is most necessary for any type of marriage to succeed Mm -hmm. and I didn't give it to him and um, I got married in a church that certainly didn't mean that I was walking with the Lord but uh, it come to find out that uh, not having that strong belief and that strong connection with with God and the Holy Spirit that you're doomed to fail and and the enemy will certainly come in and make things harder for you. Um, right, and it, her being a non-believer as well, and then her being a dominating woman. Yes, I'm sure that that was probably the hardest part, as the Bible says, women respect your husbands. Yes, right. Um, or I should say wives respect your husbands. Right, and husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church, is what Paul says in Corinthians. And um, dominant, the domination aspect of it, I don't think was, is anything that she was seeking out to do. It was just kind of a natural consequence of just the way a lot of, uh, a lot of women behave in marriages, which is, you know, do it this way, uh, put your put your tail between your legs, husband, and uh, yes, dear, if you want to have any type of peace, it should be just yes, dear, and and that's all we need to worry about, and I I have a tendency to disagree with that. I think, <laughs> I think God intended marriage to be more about a husband and a wife, and uh, where really at the end of the day, we need to say yes, God, and not yes, dear. Right, so I, you find yourself after 18 years divorced as well. So it was very interesting to me that you and I didn't know each other (laughs) and we both go through a divorce around the same time and we're separately praying. I'm praying, Lord, send me a strong Christian man, one that is on fire for you. And it's actually funny because I remember being in that prayer closet and just crying to God and saying, he's showing me how to do it, to do marriage his way and not the world's way and what that looked like. And I remember he told me fast pray and he gave me three books to read. And one of those books was Love and Respect. And the gist of that book was so interesting, changed my life and perspective forever. And it said, wives respect your husbands, even when they don't deserve it, even when you don't feel like it because it ignites the love in them for you. And there's the key. And while God's telling me, 
how to be a godly wife and what I was doing wrong because I had to put my pride aside and ask God, okay, I wasn't just married once. I was married twice. Now I'm married twice and divorced yet again. God, why? Like, why did both of my husbands leave me? And he told me, you married a non-believer and you were not equally yoked and you dominated them. And I'm like, whoa. So he's teaching me through the five love languages, power of a praying wife and love and respect, what a godly woman, what that looks like. And he was also teaching you, which I didn't know you yet. What was he teaching you and through what ministries? Well, I'm glad he told taught you not to be dominating. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I would say, you know, simultaneously, he's teaching me how to lead. And he's teaching me how to lead my family and to have the... Uh, the direction of where our family needs to go, whether that be financial or um, extracurricular or whatever it is, but just to take a stand, um, you know, be the head of the household. But that does not mean being, of course, authoritarian or or any type of negative um, traits, but also to just get my family uh, in the word of God, get them to church, be the example, but also act that way. Right. And there's a whole nother a uh, set of rules that right. that we have we have a behavior that we have a responsibility to act appropriately uh, whether we're in front of people or whether we're alone and I do believe that God um, sanctifies a husband and and he needs to be uh, separate from the world when we come back you'll find out who the boss of our marriage is we'll be right back You won't hear how God is working on mainstream media, but you will hear it on the Jennifer Sheehan television show. In a world currently imprisoned by fear, I'm committed to telling fearless stories of hope, restoration, redemption, and miracles. Here's just a sample of stories my amazing guests share about God's limitless love in action. God rescued me from pornography and sex addiction. I was on the brink of death, but Jesus saved me. I was attacked by a huge grizzly bear but God preserved my life. At the age of two, raised by my sister without parents, my birth father threw me against a metal sheet wall, slicing my stomach open, leaving me for dead in a pool of blood. After he abandoned me, my true heavenly father, God, did not. My 17-year-old son was murdered on Christmas Eve. I was in a bad place. I purchased a gun each day, went to the lake and held it to my head to end my life. After over 50 guns, I sought out professional help. I went on the Jennifer Sheehan television show to share my story. On filming day, God got a hold of my heart, and right there on the set, I prayed to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. This show is giving people hope in Jesus. You know, that's why we do what we do. We, we want you to hear and see amazing stories of how God brings beauty from ashes and how he brings hope and healing. Even in the midst of life's hardest struggles, God is using this show to change lives. Through the power of story, the Jennifer Sheehan television show is sharing the gospel in regions around the globe. We reach an audience of over three million people in the US, Africa, India, Pakistan, and China. Will you partner with us so that the Jennifer Sheehan show continues to grow in its influence and reach for Jesus Christ? Donate your tax-deductible gift at the Jennifer Sheehan Show com slash donate. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. All right, baby. So separately, not knowing each other yet, I find myself divorced for the second time. At this age, I'm in my prayer closet and I'm just crying to God, just bawling to God. Lord, I did not want to be divorced and alone and single at this age. Like, what the heck? And I'm like, so I'm praying for God to send me a husband. I got a list about this big and I'm praying and I'm like, Lord, my faith is strong. I might need a preacher. So clearly he told me, Jennifer, you don't need a preacher. He, the preacher will bore you. You need a man on fire for me like you. Okay, Lord, send me him. So I had no idea what was about to happen. And what were you praying for? not even knowing each other yet. Well, obviously I was praying for the same type of peace um, in, in, in a marriage. I knew I was going to get married again. 
Um, obviously, God over-delivered when he brought me you. And, thank you. And Lord, thank you. You must love me to have brought me here. Um, you know, you're just, you were really everything I needed, but more than what I wanted, just what I really needed, um, but everything I've wanted too. So it's really, it's difficult to put into words, but I was certainly praying for a, you know, a woman on fire for God and a faithful woman, uh, a woman that was not walking in the world, that was um, seeing the greater purpose of why we're here and what we're, what we're meant to do in our roles um, as husband and wife. Right. And there's actually a scripture of the woman that you were looking for. Absolutely. Proverbs 31. And I think Proverbs uh, 31, 30 says uh, her charm may be deceitful and her beauty might be fleeting, but a woman that um, surrenders to God is worthy of praise. And that's exactly what you do. Mm-hmm. I didn't know if your charm was real when I first met you. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe this is something's going to happen here. She's going to she's going to be a person that I never even that I didn't meet. But you are absolutely 100 percent the same exact person I met from day one, Mm, which has been um, a very shocking but pleasant surprise uh, to having a wife. Uh, You've just been my blessing. What can I say? Thank you, baby. (laughs) You're my blessing as well. Let's talk about um, how to do it God's way. You talk about hierarchy all the time. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Well, anytime I prioritize anything in my life, I I put it on a uh, in a hierarchy or an order of importance, you might say. And according to the Bible. Yes. So according to the Bible, there's always God is the head. He's at the top. And I'm always working my way through whatever I do throughout life to get to the top and to do it. And I can't get to the top unless I do it the way he wants me to do it. So I have to really pretty much just um, skip over all the worldly stuff, go straight mm-hmm. to the top, do it his way. And then, of course, you're right after him uh, as, as my cherished wife. I, I, will, I love and honor you and, and support you. So God first, my wife second, my kids third, and then so on and so on, wherever you decide to put your hierarchy in. But um, I, th- I think once we start putting our energy into the Father and then into each other, miracles happen every day. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting that that God says it's supposed to be him first, our Mm. spouse is second, our children third. As Jimmy Evans always says, children are a temporary assignment from God. And it's it's him first and then us. And it's beautiful how that works out because it all just seems to fall into place when we do it his way instead of our way. It it definitely does. Just try it and you will believe once you try it. So listening to what these different books and and praying and getting on our knees and um, knowing that it's supposed to be God first and then us second. I mean, it is easier said than done. We have to be in God's word and on our knees and praying. But as we were both praying separately, um, it's just incredible to me that we're doing this separately, but we're praying for the same thing. We're praying for each other. We just didn't know. We it. didn't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> we had no idea. No, you're, you're absolutely correct. It's just God calls us to obedience to do what he wants us to do. And then therefore he will pour out a blessing that we cannot, you know, we cannot withhold. And that's exactly what he does. If we aim towards the top, we get the top. It's very simple, really. Um, so I didn't even know what a dating app was. I was married <laughs> 23 years. The the word divorce didn't even come out of my mouth. I took off the wedding ring, you know, got divorced, and all of a sudden it was 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds. I'm like, oh, dear. Uh-huh. And, and crazy at how many guys that are out there that are just dogs. And I'm like, but I had this long list of what I wanted in a man. But we go on the um, dating apps, and I went on a whole bunch of them. It was like a full-time job. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and you, too. And so... Guilty. We're both dating and, and so forth. And I still remember your profile. And it's funny because on, on Bumble, you're, I think you're supposed to swipe right. And I don't even remember. I wasn't on there very long. You got me off the market fast. Of course. And so I'm like, I'm like swiping, swiping. And I was swiping the wrong way. I was just looking at profiles. And liking they're like, everybody. yes, liking everybody. And I was like, oh, dear, what did I just do? And they're like, hey, you matched. I'm like, oh, dear, I'm matching with a lot of guys. So then once I figured out which way to swipe, 
then I, I, you know, of course, you know, went on some dates and so forth, but most of them only lasted one date. Most of them didn't even get a date. They just had a conversation because I was like, no, 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 you're not the one. <laughs> because this time I'm walking with the Lord. I know what I want mm. and I know how to ra- ask the right questions. And uh, it was so interesting when you had just put on Bumble, Jesus Christ has to be your Lord and Savior. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, he's cute. And I, t- I hit it and it's like, you matched. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Do you remember that? I do remember that. I mean, I was at a time where I'm walking down a dark path of uh, you know, recently divorced and going a little crazy, more crazy than I need to. And I needed I needed to settle down. And I cannot walk in the darkness anymore. And so, yeah, that's what I was I was praying for. I didn't think I would even really get many takers, to be honest with you. As right. Didn't you say it was crickets? You put yeah. Jesus Christ has to be your Lord and Savior. That's your non-negotiable. And you said crickets. I like. don't think I even, somebody swiped on me for the next couple of weeks. But only me. I Only you. <laughs> but I expected that. So. And our, our first conversation. How long was our first conversation? About four hours. <laughs> Yep. Have you ever talked to a woman like that four hours, really, the first time you talked to her? Never. It's crazy, right? It is. And every conversation times. after that, for six months, t- at least two to four hour conversations. And we still talk just... Just as much. And we don't even and know. And now it. we've been married how long? Since July 2nd, so four months? Four months. Four months, baby. <laughs> I love it. When we come back, God gives Chris and I an amazing gift. We'll be right back. A house is built with walls, but a home is built with memories. Firehouse Movers takes great pride and honor in serving your moving needs. Built over a fireman's code of ethics to be truthful and honest at all times, to display excellence, respect, and loyalty, we are honored for you to entrust us with your valuable memories. And we have been doing so for over 20 years with hundreds of five-star reviews. We never compromise in quality because we understand that it's easier to explain our prices than to apologize for poor service. Call us today at 972-412-6033 and let us tell you why we're passionate for what we do. Learn more at firehousemovers.com. By His grace, we live. By His will, we bond together to serve you. Jennifer Sheehan Show Magazine promotes and connects Christians and Christian-owned businesses worldwide. It's digital, nonprofit, and full of inspirational stories. The magazine is emailed, shared on our social media, and promoted weekly on our TV show, reaching millions of viewers. To subscribe to this free magazine and for advertising opportunities, go to thejennifersheehanshow.com. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. So you and I know the Bible says we are to be equally yoked when you get married. And so many people don't know what equally yoked means, but it means one Christian is supposed to marry another Christian. And I think that's where so many people fall short, that I didn't really understand that when I got married, you didn't really understand that. And we kind of both thought our spouses were Christians, but neither one of us were really walking with the Lord at the time. And once we did, and once we understood what equally yoked meant, so so here we are dating, and uh, we hadn't even been dating very long. And you told me you told your mom something very interesting. What did you tell your mom? You know, just be ready, mom, because Jennifer's either going to be my best friend or she's going to be my wife. And... Um, I was just I was just proclaiming it because once I met you and I kept seeing your heart, uh, I was seeing the interior, not the exterior of, of who you were and seeing this genuine, uh, this beautiful creature of Christ because you really walk the walk. Thanks, um, baby. I appreciate and it's that. such a it's such an you're an amazing example for me to stand up in righteousness and and to walk in the Lord as well. So I, I just believe that this is uh, it's just like we're feeding off of each other, right. uh, so to speak. So. And you would tell me that. You would tell me, you know, 
you're going to be my best friend for life. I'm like, okay. And you're like, or my wife. I'm like, okay, well, look, it hasn't <laughs> been very long. And, and you, you I might were, have been rushing things. You were, you were like, get this girl off the market. And I was like, okay. And you kept saying, you know, let's date exclusively. And I'm like, okay, hold on. Not yet. Yeah. Like I was married 23 years. And so it was just interesting how we just kept growing and growing and, and all of those two to four hour conversations and learning each other's hearts. And, you know, God really broke my heart through your stories mm. because I remember you telling me my, you know, my ex-wife did this and this is, and I'm like, Oh, I did that too. And you would get so sad about some of the things and how you weren't able to lead and, uh, her being dominating. I was also dominating. I dominated my ex-husband and my ex-ex-husband. And I didn't know how bad that was. I didn't know what yeah. that looked like. So if it wasn't for you sharing your pain with me of you, being dominated and, and passive, then that broke my heart for you and showed me what not to do. Right. And so it gets me on my knees saying, Lord, I don't want to be that person. I want to be able to submit to my husband as the Lord. And you know, it's interesting because you are such a good man. You are such a good godly man and you make it so easy for me to respect you. Well, I appreciate that. And, you know, to talk about the dominating, the dominating aspect of it, you know, I just... I just don't think that most women want to do. I think most women would like to be led uh, by their husband. I think our culture has uh, made women very afraid to let a man lead. Right. And I think that, you know, many women uh, would just try to um, save face and maybe put keep the pride on before they would allow their, their husbands to lead because they're also very afraid that he's going to make a mistake. And we might make mistakes. And right. And we that have is to inevitable. We will all make mistakes. But... God needs us as the head because we have got to lead lead our wives and we got to lead our children. Right. You just make it so easy for me to you. allow you to lead and, you know, doing things like hitting our knees and praying. And, you know, when we were dating and we literally physically get our knees mm -hmm. in my living room in the ottoman and hold hands and we pray and we stand as brother and sister in Christ because that's what we became. We became brother and sister in Christ. Before, before husband and wife. Absolutely. And best friends. And best friends. And we would hit our knees and then we started seeing miracles. And one of the first miracles that we saw when we hit our knees was praying for both of our ex's salvation. Uh -huh. Who even does that? <laughs> and we're praying for my ex's salvation. And then God lets it happen. He prays to receive Christ as his Savior with me. And what a miracle. And then praying for both of your boys' salvation. And mm -hmm. within a month, they both pray to receive Christ as their Savior with me. And we're still praying for your ex-wife's salvation. And yep. we're going to continue to pray for them. And just to see all these miracles, to see the power of, of husband and wife hitting their knees together and praying is a miracle to me. But let's go back to the other part of our love story. <laughs> so here we, we fall in love and you say, you know, let's go to premarital counseling before you get married. And I'm like, at first I was like, no, because only like two months. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, no, I was we've, way not, forward. we've not dated long enough. And But you're just like, come on, come on. I'm like, OK, fine. So we go through our minister friend, Josh Christian. We go through the, the, the um, counseling before yep. you get married counseling. And um, he's just like, Jennifer, I believe Chris is your gift from God. And I remember even you going to um, Vicki. I went to counseling the last year, Christian counseling, and you started going to her. And I'm like, do you see any red flags? <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, and she's like, she goes, no, actually. She goes, I know it's only been six months, but she's like, I believe you are who you say you are. I believe Chris is who he says he is. And there are not a lot of men like Chris out there. She goes, I believe you guys are supposed to get married and do ministry together. And I believe you're going to be really happy. And there are just not a lot of men like Chris out there. Well, and I'm I, just, like, I just think that transparency is key. God can see right through us. Knows our heart, knows our mind. Why would we want to try to hide something, you know, to, to a spouse that they're going to find out anyway? Right. I mean, let's just get it all out in the open. And, and you were. First mm. four-hour conversation, this is who I am, the first conversation. Absolutely. Every, and I was like, whoa. And that, you know, you <laughs> being so non-judgmental. Mm. And I remember you telling me, Jennifer, even if we don't get married, even if we don't stay together, anything that you've ever told me, it's in the vault. I will never repeat it. And you're just so non-judgmental and so humble. It made it very easy for me just to speak very freely with you. And then I remember... Um, we go to Joshua, we do the counseling, and then you set up the whole engagement stuff. We started designing the wedding ring, and 
And then you surprised me coming out of a restaurant with our friends filming, and you have a guitarist singing Easy, one of our favorite songs by Jason yeah. Aldean. And you just get on your knee in front of everyone and propose to me, and I was like shocked. You caught me off guard. You did a good job. That was my goal, because you're always on guard. So yes, I, had to catch I was you like, oh my gosh, and we get engaged and. The craziest thing was we get engaged, so we're thinking we've got some time. And then seven days later, you just wake up one morning. You're like, why wait? <laughs> you're like, marry me today. And I'm like, oh, OK. And we call Joshua Christian. Joshua, we want to get married today. And here I've got the wedding dress. We've got everything. We just forget about all that. We're in flip flops on my balcony mm -hmm. on the 25th floor. And Joshua shows up. And how was that? Well, it was, of course, wonderful because Joshua invited the Holy Spirit and invited God the Father to show up at our wedding. And he, and once he did that, he said, Lord, you are welcome here to give this woman away. And uh, he showed up and we just... You start crying. We all, I we all, start crying. And Joshua, did. what did he say? He says, Lord, you're here. He's like, okay, Lord, thank you for showing up. Like he, We all knew that he <laughs> we came. We all felt... Yes. We felt the Holy Spirit so strongly then. And, and then water works, yes. And just both of us just crying mm -hmm. and, and that's what just he does. feeling him. And for the first time, we get married and we know that God made us one. Indeed he did. It's just crazy that he just made us one and now we know. And then you said right away, okay, we can't just have fun. This is an assignment. We've got an assignment to do. We need to get to work. Yes. <laughs> We do. Oh, it's just. If I'm we can, just, if we can save one marriage, it's it makes all the work worth it. But it's all it's all worth it to do. We both have some some stories to tell from our past experiences. To do this life with you is just amazing, and much you better. You, you are my gift from God. I love you, baby. Love you too. <laughs> when we come back, you also can have this amazing marriage. We'll be right back. Can you imagine living in a resort with like-minded people, full of amenities and activities, where safety and health are priorities, where chef-prepared meals, heated indoor pool, and many more amenities are all accessible 24-7, where the joy of life is felt in every corner, a company managed by the Nicholas Foundation, people who truly care about people. It's time to reward yourself. It is time for the Retreat Senior Living, the resort you call home. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. You also can have this marriage by praying for God to send you your spouse. But first, if you haven't prayed to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, pray with me. Jesus, I know you died on the cross for my sin. You rose again on the third day. Please forgive me for my sin. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Tune in next week. We've got another great story for you.